Stub protection is simple over current protection it is used to protect the power system transmission line when the line isolator is in open condition. Stub protection is nothing but a simple phase over current protection which is used to protect the power system under ring bus or one and half bus configuration when the line isolators are opened. It is basically an inbuilt function of a distance relay. It falls under the auxiliary part of the distance relay. Stub protection is an enhanced form of overcurrent protector and is used significantly in transmission system networks especially, the OAHS which is the one and a half breaker scheme. Specifically, it is intended to shield areas of the power system for which regular distance protection is not effective when the line isolators are switched off. Stub protection is necessary when the input is disconnected by the opening of the line isolator, which cannot send requ required voltage and current to the distance protection. In such cases the region between the circuit breakers and the open isolator can be prone to the faults and hence the stub protection is provided as one form of backup protection. Working principle of stub protection, the fact is the functioning of stub protection is based on the status of the line isolator. When the isolator is open, stub protection system is operative, the current is covered by the distance relay. The protection is normally set to snap if the current of fault is above a certain level, often above the full load of current on the line. It allows the equipment to operate normally without the flowing current tripping and yet provides quick fault clearance when the isolator breaker is open. Let us suppose that line 1 is under maintenance and its line isolator 89L is open. However, the associated circuit breakers are closed for feeding line 2 from bus 1. As long as the associated circuit breakers of line 1 are open, open, we don't have any problem as far as protection is concerned. As soon as the breakers are closed let us say for feeding line 2 from bus 1. The section in between the CT1 and CT2 becomes vulnerable as it loses protection. This is because the section is protected via main 1 protection of line 1, that is distance relay 1. As the isolator 89L of line 1 is open therefore the distance relay does not get the voltage input from line 1 CDT which is connected after the line isolator. This causes a problem. As we know the distance relay measures the impedance of the line, which is a function of voltage and current. The distance relay is now unable to provide the required protection to the section between both CTs because of the loss of voltage input from the line CVT. Now to compensate for this lack of protection in this section, stub protection is introduced to the protection philosophy. The only possible thing to protect the section in lack of voltage is the overcurrent protection philosophy. Stub protection is an inherent part of the main one protection. It is an overcurrent element that is instantaneous in nature. It is capable of generating a trip signal instantly to, to the associated circuit breakers as soon as any discrepancies in the current parameter of any of the three phases are sensed. Thus providing the required protection to the unprotected section in case of opening of 89L. As the status of 89L open reaches the distance relay, it then switches to stub protection mode or makes it enable while disabling the distance protection function to protect the section between two current transformers. To ensure precise protection the fault current limit is set higher than the full load current of the line, preventing unintended tripping during normal service conditions. Another reason why the fault current setting is not set lower than the full load current is that if due to any maloperation false isolator status goes in the relay, it will activate the stub protection and unnecessary tripping of the line will take place, which is not an ideal case. Additionally, the time delay is to be set to zero or below the zone 2 time delay for swift fault isolation. This quick response is needed to ensure no propagation of faults and prevent cascading effect which ensures the reliability and stability of the grid during critical emergencies. Key features of stub protection, activation condition, here, one can note that stub protection is only activated when the isolator of the line is open. Fault current setting, the current threshold is chosen to be higher than the full load current so as to prevent the circuit breaker from tripping during normal operations. Zero delay, the time delay of tripping is most preferably set to zero or less than the zone 2 time delay for tripping the connected lines to counter faults. Application in one and a half breaker scheme, in one and a half breaker bus configuration two lines connect to two buses through three cir circuit breakers. This situation means that, while a single line is out of service with the isolator opened, it is only possible for the remaining line to loop through a single breaker. 
Stub protection facilitates protection of the stub bus area that remains unprotected due to opening of the circuit breakers by offering the same when the ladder is open. Stub protection is a critical component of power system protection and security, which comes under the broad umbrella of power system engineering. While it may not be a universally recognized term in the field, the principles and systems it refers to are essential for the safe and efficient operation of electrical grid stations. Understanding stub protection requires some knowledge about the electrical power grid. The grid consists of interconnected networks for delivering electricity from suppliers to consumers. These networks include generators, transformers, circuit breakers, power lines, and more. Stub protection is nothing but a simple phase over current protection which is used to protect the power system under ring bus or one and half bus configuration when the line isolators are op opened. With the one and a half breaker configuration an operating mode is possible whereby the feeder is out of service the feeder one isolator opened while both circuit breakers are in closed condition such a bus system is called stub bus. It just shares the loads between the buses. Faults are unintended electric currents that occur due to equipment failure, whether conditions, human error, or natural disasters. These could be ground faults where a hot wire touches a ground wire or a grounded portion of the system, short circuits where a hot wire touches a neutral or another hot wire, or open circuits where a wire is broken or disconnected. To protect power systems from these faults and maintain system stability, protection schemes are put in place. These include a variety of devices like fuses, circuit breakers, and relays, which detect and isolate faults to prevent or limit damage to the system and ensure the safety of people. In the context of power system protection, a stub usually refers to a short branch line or cable connected to a longer main line or feeder. These stub lines can be particularly vulnerable to faults, including ground faults and short circuits, due to their physical properties and the electrical loads they carry. Stub protection, then, refers to the methods used to detect and isolate faults on these stub lines to prevent them from affecting the main feeder or other parts of the power, power system. This is often done using protective devices placed at the connection point between the main line and the stub line. These devices are designed to trip or automatically disconnect the stub line from the rest of the system if they detect a fault. The distance protection needs line voltage and current inputs to operate. As the line is under shutdown and the line isolator is in open condition, there is no voltage in the distance relay. In this case, to protect the area as marked in the diagram, we need stub protection. It is the function of distance relay. When the distance relay gets the open status from the line isolator, it will block the distance protection and enable the stub protection to protect the area. Under this protection, the minimum fault current limit is set above the full load current of the line, and delay time is set as zero. The fault current of stub protection should not be set below the full load current of the line because during the service condition of the line, due to any reason, if wrong isolator status goes to the relay, the stub protection will activate and it will trip the line. The delay time is also set to zero or less than the zone 2 time delay of the lines connected to the bus because if the fault is not isolated instantly, the fault will detect by other connected lines under zone 2 and all the connected lines will trip. Let us assume an one and half breaker configuration. Now the isolator 1 is in open condition. CB1 and CB2 is in closed condition. Now all faults in the zone between CB1, CB2, and ISO1 are stub faults. The stub protection boundary is defined by the location of the current transformers as shown above. above. This section cannot be protected by the distance protection function if the line isolators are opened. The use of the function can be extended to various other purposes, when a three-phase overcurrent protection can operate only under special external conditions. Let us assume an one and half breaker configuration, now the isolator one is in open condition. CB1 and CB2 is in closed condition. Now all faults in the zone between CB1, CB2, and ISO1 are stub faults. The stub protection boundary is defined by the location of the current transformers. This section cannot be protected by the distance protection function if the line isolators are opened. The use of the function can be extended to various other purposes, when a three-phase overcurrent protection can operate only under special external conditions. Let us assume an one and half breaker configuration, now the isolator 1 and CB1 is in open condition. CB2 is in closed condition. 
Now fault between the circuit breaker 1 and the current transformer 1. In this condition the relay belongs to CB1 send the trip command to the CB2 breaker even the CB1 is in open condition. This kind of backup protection is called stub protection. The stub protection will be enabled only, the line isolator 1 in open condition. Generally, to enable this function, the isolator status feedback contact will be given to the distance protection. The distance protection needs line voltage and current inputs to operate. As the line is under shutdown and the line isolator is in open condition, there is no voltage in the distance relay. In this case, to protect the area as marked in the diagram, we need stub protection. Stub protection is the function of the distance relay. When the distance relay gets the open status from the line isolator, it will block the distance protection and enable the stub protection to protect the area. Under stub protection, the minimum fault current limit is set above the full load current of the line, and delay time is set as zero. The fault current of stub protection should not be set below the full load current of the line because during the service condition of the line, due to any reason, if wrong isolator status goes to the relay, the stub protection will activate, and it will trip the line. The delay time is also set to zero or less than the zone 2 time delay of the lines connected to the bus because if the fault is not isolated instantly, the fault will detect by other connected lines under zone 2 and all the connected lines will trip. In dual breaker applications a line disconnect can be opened while the two breakers are closed to facilitate continuous service of other circuits. At the same time the line may be energized from the other end or ends to service tap loads or transmit power between the other two line terminals. The stub bus zone between the two breakers and the open disconnect is properly protected. In single breaker application a simple overcurrent function supervised with the disconnect open signal is sufficient. In dual breaker applications such simple solution would face security problems under through fault conditions and saturated CTs. Either a differential type stub bus protection is implemented with the use of proper restraint to counterbalance the impact of saturated CTs, or the supervisory logic is adopted for tripping. Tripping. When tripping on stub bus faults, no DTT direct transfer trip is to be sent to the remote ends as they are already isolated from the fault by the open disconnect switch. Upon failure of one of the breakers, no BF trip is to be sent to the remote ends either. A fault in the stub bus zone must not result in tripping the remote line terminals. Permissive directional comparison schemes typically do not have a problem. A permanent permission is keyed under the circumstances disconnect opened while the breakers are closed, an echo scheme is used, or an overreaching zone 1 is applied at the remote end under the circumstances. In three terminal applications or with tap loads, it may happen that the remote end will see the fault in the stub bus zone despite the open disconnect. This creates security problems if permanent permission or an echo scheme is used. If the fault current closes through the third line terminal, no permission will be sent from that terminal. But if the line closes via an unmonitored tap load, the problem remains. Avoiding two sensitive overreaching functions at the remote end solves the problem. Under the circumstances blocking directional comparison schemes are practically equivalent to permissive schemes with permanent permission or echo as described above. Making sure the overreaching forward-looking fault detectors never pick up for faults in the stub bus zone solves the problem. With the respect of the stub bus protection and application phase comparison relays can be dealt with as the same way as direction comparison schemes. Line current differential schemes require the relay under the stub bus condition to transmit zero currents regardless of its actual measurements. In this way under the stub bus fault, the 87L function will not trip the line at the remote terminals. This process is usually coordinated with other protective devices on the system to minimize the impact of the fault on the power supply to consumers. For example, if a ground fault occurs on a stub line, a ground fault relay at the connection point may detect the fault current and send a signal to a circuit breaker to disconnect the line. This can prevent the fault from spreading to the main line and causing a larger outage or more severe damage to the power system equipment. It's important to note that the specific devices and methods used for stub protection can vary depending on the design and operation of the power system, the types of loads served by the stub line, and other factors. Hence, the design and implementation of these protection schemes require careful planning and analysis by power system engineers to ensure their effectiveness and reliability.